Mm -hmm. Alright, so look, this is like a new type of video. Um, yeah, this is like a new type of video to the channel. And I've never, I never made a video like this before, but I kind of want to start getting into like the more giving information type of videos and just like going down rabbit holes of music, films, um, just anything I'm really interested in. So, lately, for the past, um, this year and a little bit of last year, I started getting into um, films and um, cinematic, you know what I'm saying, like films, movies, and I've actually made my own film this year, so a little promo, if you want to watch that, I see everything as art. I'm actually inspired to be a film director one day. This year, and a little bit, a little bit of the ending of last year. I um started getting into movies and I've I've always watched movies like since I was little because my dad my dad has like a my dad has a love for films and my mom does too. So I've always been I, you know saying I've always been watching movies but I haven't like as of lately I've like really sat down and um took in movies like try to understand a movie in my perspective in my everyday life. So and I just, I love film, bro, and I love recording. And, um, yeah, I'm inspired to be a film director one day, too. But, enough talking about that. Today, we are talking about 20 films. And I could have made, like, 10, I could have made 10, 15. But I decided to just do 20. I have a list um, right here. And I'm going um, to talk about 20 films. And these films are some of my favorite some of my favorites I've watched um, since I've been, like, actually watching movies, like, for real, and really trying to understand film. So, this video is worth a watch because these movies are actually really good. Like, I wouldn't put these movies in the video if I didn't like them. And, um, I actually have four posters behind the camera I have on my wall right now that are in this list. So, yeah, let me know if y'all know some of these films. Y'all probably, y'all probably do, but, um... Yeah, I'm really trying to, I've really been doing my homework on films lately. I've been really, like, taking time and watching all of them. Um, I sometimes get style inspiration from some movies. And um, I get inspiration to make other films, too, when I watch movies, too. So, yeah, 20 films. Let's go down the list. All right, first film, we got Fight Club. So, I actually watched this. I, I watched this last year when I was getting into more films and all that. And I've heard of this movie a long time ago. But um, with most films, I just never watched. I just never watched them because I didn't like. I wasn't interested in just sitting through a whole movie and watching it. But now that I've. Now that I've fallen in love with film. And I really want to understand the movie. So to this day, I still. This movie is very. It's very confusing. But the way it's shot and just the storytelling in this movie is it's amazing, bro. So it's starring Brad Pitt. If you don't know who Brad Pitt is, you living on a rock. Like for real. Brad Pitt. We got Edward Norton. And so we got Ed Edward Norton. We got Brad Pitt. Edward Norton. I, I think he's like fighting. He's fighting a condition. But it's like this movie is very... Confusing. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna tell like y'all like the whole storyline or anything like that because that's just the that's that's ruining the point. It's about him and his alter ego, and it's just about it's like battling with masculine masculinity and um and the fin like the feminine side of it too. It's like him and his alter ego, and um Brad Pitt is the alter ego that he meets on a plane or something like that, and. Bro, the movie, it, I don't know, bro, it's just, it teaches you, like, if you watch it, and you just, you pay attention to the conversations that him and, um, Brad Pitt have, they teach you a lot about life, and how, like, a lot of things in the, like, in the world today is corrupt, and how a lot of things just, you know what I'm saying, it's not fair, and that's one, one thing I got out of the movie is, like, it taught me, some lessons in the movie too. You probably might have to watch it two times maybe because it is confusing. I'm I need to watch it again. But um it's a great movie though. The way it's filmed, I love the way it's filmed 
And um, yeah, bro, it's just about it's just about alter egos. It's about his alter ego and how, bro. It's confusing though. Like, it's really, you you really have to watch it and you really have to think about what you're watching when you're watching the movie. So yeah, Fight Club. Next on the list, we got Kill Bill. We got Kill Bill One, Kill Bill Two. But yeah, Kill Bill. The first one, the second one, and I don't, is that third one? Wait, is that third one? I don't know, but the whole, tri- the, whole the, uh, the whole trilogy of Kill Bill. I actually watched Kill Bill when I was like, um, real little when I was living, when I was staying at my granddad's house, and I, that's when I used to watch film, uh, that's when I watched a lot of movies, was with my dad, and I get, in, I got introduced to Kill Bill. And fast forward, I watched it again, and now like I'm like I'm more like open minded. It's starring Uma Uma Thurman. I think that's how you say her name. Yeah, Uma Thur Uma Thurman. My fault, but um, bro, it's so fire. It's like a action packed movie, and um, it's about this girl who literally on the hunt to kill her dad. The whole the whole movie. She's on the hunt to kill her dad. Her dad, like, assigns these assassins to kill her. Oh, yeah. Attempts to murder her. Okay, look. Attempts to murder her on her wedding day. And then after that is the whole movie is about her just trying to, trying to off her dad. That's the whole point. So, but, bro, it's just, like, so far, bro. Like, it's like a Japanese type of style film too like the way it's shot in the black and white scene and bro she's just bad like she's just bro she's so fire bro especially in that movie too but yeah it's her trying it's literally her whole thing trying to kill and trying to offer dad in the end like yeah i think she goes to japan to get a sword like get like a real sword and like train for a few months and then she just goes on a kill streak, like literally, like she goes on a kill streak, and there's one scene I I really like when it like it turns black and white. I don't know if it's on the second one or the first one, but she just goes crazy. But she goes crazy. That's all I can say. She goes crazy. But Kill Bill, the whole trilogy, watch the whole trilogy one, two, and I think this three. I don't know, but yeah, Kill Bill, one of the best action pack movies I've ever seen. I'm not gonna lie, like she's so bro. It's so far. That's all I can say. Next on the list, we got Pulp Fiction. Now, Pulp Fiction is... It made, like, films and just other stuff have, like, a culture reset. And that was one of the films that made a lot of things go... Get pop... Like, get popular and, like, start a whole new trend. And just start a whole new wave with movies and all that. Um, film director is uh, Quinn Tantino. One of my... Yeah, probably one of my favorite directors, bro. Like the way he shoots films and just the way he um directs films. He he directed Kill Bill two, and then he directed um Pulp Fiction also. But he he's made a lot of movies. Uma Thurman again. I don't know why I'm so bad at saying actually his name, bro. John Travolta, um Samuel L. Jackson, Bruce Willis, Tim, bro. The movie so far, but the whole main of the like the story is like crime. And they're trying to. F- I'm pretty sure they're trying to find somebody. Hold up. They're hitman, and they have to go kill somebody or something like that. But uh, it's been a while since I've seen it. But bro, it's just the way um, Tarantino like directed the movie, and just how it shot. Great movie, bro. Like it's a must watch too. Especially if like not like in the 90s, like films like that. That's what I'm saying. I think yeah, it was like a culture reset when they made that film. Next on the list is probably one of the most weirdest movies I've ever seen in my life. I like I've seen a lot of people say um, this movie's like a one time watch. I mean I could see that being a thing because it's very trippy, bro. Like I mean the movie is about drugs, so it is a very trippy movie. But we got Rick. Rick, I I still don't know how to say this word, bro. Requiem of a Dream. I'm not saying the first word right. First of all, it's a trip. So, I can see why some people say it's a one-time thing. Like, you watch it and never watch it again. But, um, yeah, starring Jer- Jared Leto and some other people in the film. Like, Fight Club. It's very confusing because it's so trippy, bro. Like, it's so trippy. 
but the main gist of it is comparing so we have Jay Leto and we have his girlfriend another dude and they're they're friends so they like they're hooked on they're hooked on drugs and all that too his girlfriend's hooked on drugs his mom Jay Leto's mom is I think like want to like lose weight so the whole thing about it is addiction and like trying to like get sober from addiction and just the like the pain you go through to get through that I guess how I guess that's how I can explain it but it's very trippy like the movie is very confusing too so that's another thing so you really have to pay close attention but the way it's shot in some like some angles in some ways they shoot this like shoot scenes is very like it's different that's all I can say it's, it's very different and I like the I like the film the film style of that movie that's one of the reasons why I liked it so much because I, I like the way it was filmed especially like with all the other movies on this list like I like the way it's filmed and some of the some of the films I just like this like I like the storytelling of the film and just how it plays out Requiem for a Dream my bad um a very very trippy movie so caution if you do want to watch it it is a trip but I watched it at 3 o'clock. I remember. I was in my room. I watched it at 3 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why. Worst idea ever. Do not watch it at 3 o'clock in the morning. Because it's and it kind of gives a weird, creepy vibe too of the film. But, yeah. The movie's very trippy though. But it's a, it's a good film though. Like, it's a good film. It's kind of it's kind of like a romance. A little bit, kind of, of... um. Jet Leto and his girlfriend. So it's kind of like a romance in the mix of it too. Next film is a film that I recently watched. I think about a few days ago actually. Um, called Whiplash. When I watched this film I kind of felt like. It gives you anxiety a lot. Low key but. So it's this dude who wants to. Um, he's a drummer and he wants to be the best at it. Like he wants to be. One of the best in the world. Like, he wants to be one of the best. He practices, like, he practices all night, all day. And his teacher is, like, very, very, like, he don't play around. Like, he's going to yell at you. He's going to throw, like, he literally throws something at the dude in the in the film. And it touches on, like, chasing dreams and how bad do you want it. And how much time and effort are you going to put into to achieve that goal. Or to achieve that dream you want to achieve so much. So he's like practicing all day, all night. Hands bleeding. Like, And the way it's filmed is so dramatic. And it's very dramatic. They put a lot of effort into making the film. I can already tell. Bro, it's just the way it ends too. Like it's a, like it, it was a masterpiece. Like I, That's all I can say. It was a masterpiece. So it was, yeah, it's just about this drummer who wants to be amazing at what he does and his his teacher is kind of a you know like very hard on him very very hard on him because he wants him to be he like he wants him to be great you know what i'm saying but you should watch it though like it's a very very good film the way it's the way it ended too you know a film's good when you like want it to keep going so yeah bro the way it ended was a like i kind of wanted to keep going but the way it ended was kind of perfect. It low key was, but yeah, it kind of gives you anxiety too, cause the dude is like, his teacher gets on him all the time, and he's just trying his hardest, bro. He's trying his hardest to be great. You have experience with that. It takes trials, it takes tribulations, like trials and tribulations to get where you want to get. But yeah, bro, I just like the message in the in the film too, and all the effort. And passion he put into um, just one drum set. Like, I feel like that was beautiful, bro. Like, real. Alright. Next film. We got mid-90s. Um, I kind of seen a lot. I kind of see a lot of hate on this movie, low-key. I mean, a lot, of people do lo- a lot of people do love it. But I personally enjoyed it, for real. Um, the director is Jonah Hill. If, y- if y'all don't know who Jonah Hill is. J- um, an actor. But I think this is his first movie he ever made. Or directed. And he did a... Great job, did a great job. Camera turn off, but we straight. But um, yeah, he did a very good job on directing this movie and making the movie. But the reason I I like it so much is the way it's filmed. Like all the other movies I I've told y'all, 
um, it gives like a a 90s feel, like in the 90s. And it's just about this kid um, finds a group of skateboarders. They like to skate. And it's like, yeah, he finds this group of skateboarders. It's, I think, four people in the group. In the in four people in the group, and he comes along, and he's like little, like he's real young, and he doesn't. I don't. He doesn't really like his home life for real, and he finds these people, and then he thinks they're like really dope, really cool, and until then, it's just like he like makes a fan, like he, they, like they feel like they're family to him. Like I mean, of course they go through trials and tribulations, of course, but at the end, you know, like. They're together like a family, you know what I'm saying? So it's like their brotherhood and that love from um, and the, the skateboarding and all that really ties into it. But it's not really a skateboarder type of film. That's what Jonah Hill said. It's all about like the storytelling, the relationships that the kid has on the the group that he um joins. And um yeah, bro, it's a cool movie. I love the way it's shot too. It really feels like a 90s film. That's actually one of the movies that I got inspiration to shoot my next film for. Because, like, the way it's filmed is in, like, a different type of frame. So, that's one of the inspirations I got to make my next film. Next movie, The Notebook. Um, this movie is a very cheesy, romantic um, film. But... It has a lot of passion in it, bro, and it's very, you can feel the pain, and you can feel the love, and probably one of the best romantic, like, romance movies I've ever watched before, and I just now watched it a few days ago, and a lot of these movies I'm very, very, very late on, because I'm just now starting into films, but I've seen this movie a lot on TikTok, and mom told me about it too, but a very 10 out of 10 movie, from the start to the finish. It's sad too, but it's really good. If you don't like romance movies, you should at least try to watch it, bro, because it's very, yeah, bro. It's like heartbreaking, and then it's like, it's everything, really. It's all emotions in one movie. Next one, The Perks of Being a Wallflower. This is another one that, this is another one that I saw a lot of people on, like, TikTok that blow up over, and people who, like, love films love this movie. And I could agree. And this is like another romance movie and probably cheesy. But I don't know. I love film, bro. Like, I love when a, I love when a movie has, like, a good story behind it. And, like, just the way it's, it builds up and it breaks down and everything like that. Yeah, a kid who joins the, joins the new school. Moving to a new school, you're lonely. Like, you're alone. And I think he has, like, mental problems, too. But he finds these... And he finds these people that um take him for who who he is, and he falls in love with this girl. And yeah, bro, it's a very good movie too. A very good movie. The emotions and just the passion that the main character brings out, you can feel it. You know what I'm saying? You can feel it. And like the the other movie, The Notebook, about the dude that is about this dude who falls in love. With this girl, they have trials and tribulations. But it's just the way it's like set up, bro. I'm talking about the notebook. The way it's set up from the start to the finish. Amazing movie. Amazing movie. But yeah, Person Me and Wildflower is an amazing movie too. Um Yeah. It's like a row of romance movies. Next one. Candy. Um starring Heath Ledger. One of the best. There's like three romance movies in a row. I did not mean to do that. But that's just how it is. Um, this movie, this movie is heartbreaking. Like it's heartbreaking. I'm not gonna lie. It's it's sad. It's sad. But about these um Heath Ledger and I forgot the girl's name. But they're in love. But they have a um drug addiction between both of them, and you can tell how that that falls out of place. So they have trials and tribulations. And um, it's really like the other movies, but this one's like very, it's sad. One part of the movie, this, ah, I can't, I can't say that because that ruins a part of the film. But Candy is a, don't watch it if you get sad easy. Because, bro, it's, 
It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. The Notebook is kind of like that, but this one is like way worse. Heath Ledger did a great job like he always does in movies. But yeah, that movie, another romance movie, but it's a good film. All in all, it's a good film. Next one, we actually have a a scary a scary movie, but it's not really that it's not really that scary. The Sixth Sense. This film is based off of um a kid who has senses to see dead people. That's really like that's really the whole movie is based off of a kid who sees dead people. But another thing is, like I said, like the other films, the way it's filmed and the way it's um directed is amazing. And then at the end, there's a plot like there's a plot twist that I didn't even see coming. That I was surprised by. So that's another reason why I love the film. That kind of like. It was like the cherry on top for The Sixth Sense. But my, me and my mom watched that one. Very good film. Um, it's not really scary. It's a little bit scary. But it's nothing like it's nothing crazy. The Sixth Sense. Good movie. A good plot twist at the end of the movie too. That was the cherry on top for me. So um, yeah. Alright. Next movie on the list. This movie actually um inspired me to make the first film I made. I see everything as art. And um yeah, Taxi Driver. Now this movie is it's kinda like a um it's like another it's like another type of film like Fight Club where like this person fights an alter, an alter ego but this time he makes his alter ego like he like shaves he shaves off his head. He goes to I can't tell you everything about the film, but um the soundtrack in the film is my favorite part. Got the jazz music, that's what inspired me to make I see everything as I see everything as art that inspired me to make that film. So yeah. Taxi driver. It's about another person who goes through a phase of alter ego and like creates a whole new person but again the way it's filmed the soundtrack in it is amazing i love the soundtrack that's an, that's one thing i didn't talk about in all the other films the soundtracks are good like i love soundtracks in films taxi driver great film i think it was like put out 1970 something so it's an older film yeah great movie great movie i have no idea what this movie is about i'm gonna be i'm gonna, I'm gonna be straight up donnie dark girl so I just now got done watching this about a few days ago too, and um, this movie's weird. That's all I gotta say. This movie's weird, and I was watching it to the end, and a lot of people, like a lot of people, were saying, like, "Bro, I watched this movie five thousand times, and I still don't know what it means." Um, that's kind of me. I don't know what it means, but I do like the way it's filmed, and I think it's just a a movie to watch. It's some. It's a cool movie to watch. So it's one of the weirdest movies I've ever watched, low key. But, and it's starring, um, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake Gyllenhaal. I forgot dude's name. But, yeah, it's about him, and it's kind of like another thing about Arthur Ego, but it's not like an ego. It's like an imaginary person that he sees, and he has, like, mental problems, and it's just, it's crazy, bro. It's a, him seeing a bunny, like, an imaginary bunny rabbit, I don't know. It's crazy. The ending, I didn't get, like, I didn't understand at all, and sometimes in films, it's okay if you don't understand. Sometimes you just it's up to your, it's up for your own interpretation of the film. So it's really whatever you think about it. So yeah, it's a very weird movie, but it's good though. That's why I put it on the list because it is good. All right, next one, The Joker, the newest one. Um, it came out like no, it's not really new. It came out like twenty nineteen, I think. But it's starring um, Joaquin Phoenix, bro. He did a May like. He did an amazing job on doing the Joker. Um, if you haven't seen it already, you need to watch it. It is very unconfident though. Like it makes you uncomfortable when you watch it because that's just that's how good that's how good this dude like played the Joker. The laugh, everything. Like he did amazing on it. So the Joker is probably one of my favorite like characters. Like in like. Super villain type of, you know what I'm saying? But he did amazing. He he's not the best Joker, but I say top two. The best one was Heath, Heath Ledger. 
We'll talk about it later. He did a great job to laugh. Bro, the emotions you feel from that movie, like, it makes you uncomfortable. Because he did, like, so good on the part. So, yeah, that film, insane. That's all I can say, insane. Next one, we got The Shining. Another scary movie from the late 80s that is way better than the films now. They're talking about, like, just demons and all that. Like, this film, Red Rum. Red Rum. If you don't know, do your homework. The Shining, um... Good, 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 scary movie. They go to this mansion in, I think it's Colorado. I think so. But they have to watch it. They they have to watch the hotel, and the hotel is haunted. The way the the way it's filmed, I'm gonna keep saying that. The way it's like directed and shot and all that makes the film ten times better. The acting in it is it's pretty good too, and the way it ends is great. So. Another good scary movie you should watch. Alright, another one. The Silence of the Lambs. This is another one that... This is another first film I watched, like, before... When I was trying to get into films and movies and all that. But the movie, Jodie Foster played a very good part in that movie. Um, I like her voice, bro. I don't know why. Like, it's, like, deep. She brought, like, a little aura. Like, an aura to the movie, low-key. So... But it's about her. She's like a doctor, and she interviews the can the cannibalism, the cannibal, whatever. And um, yeah, he escapes or something. I don't know. You gotta watch it, bro. It's a good movie. It's a good movie. But yeah, I was right in the beginning. Cannibalism, weird stuff, but it's a good movie. The Sean Shank Redemption. Sean Shank Redemption, starring Morgan Freeman, Tim Robbins. This dude gets wrong, gets wrongfully um convicted for a murder that he didn't commit, or for a crime he didn't commit, and um gets to jail, meets Morgan Freeman there. If you don't know Morgan Freeman, you're living on a rock, and um the whole film is he he's in jail for a crime he didn't do, and um he helps him escape, and the ending is amazing. It's a great great movie. Um, you should watch it. Highly recommended. My mom put me on. My mom put me on. So, great movie. And, yeah, bro. Next one, we got The Dark Knight. I literally grew up on Batman. That's my first superhero. I love Batman. And, you know how I said I was talking about Heath Ledger, the best Joker? This is the movie he played in. Heath Ledger, best Joker, hands down. I don't care what nobody says. That's the best Joker, hands down. Heath Ledger played an amazing part as a Joker. The rest in peace of Heath Ledger. But, yeah, The Dark Knight. <laughs> I grew up on Batman. I love Batman. And that's probably one of my favorite. Yeah, that's my favorite Batman movie. But I grew up on them. I used to watch them all the time in my grandparents' house. Over and over and over. Had action figures. Everything. But, movie's great. Probably one of the best superhero. It's a great movie, bro. Heath Ledger did a, Heath Ledger did a great job. On the Joker, I was been watching. I've been watching videos on how he spent like three weeks in a room, like just going over the roles and going over the um, just Joker, like him trying to be Joker. So, yeah, bro. All right. Next one, we got the Good Will Hunting. This is another very sad movie. Um, towards like the end, but it's about this college kid, and bro. He's, he's very smart. Dude's like hella smart. And the people like the people he hangs with and the things he do like the things he does um keeps him off track. And the people he meets keeps him off track. And this teacher is trying to like bro, he's trying to like get him straight. Like he's trying to like make him realize that he's smart and bro, you can like bro, we you can do something so big with your life, but you just wanna sit here and be the same person and not change. But he's, like, really smart. He can, like, solve, like, equations like crazy. And he doesn't want to admit it. And he doesn't want to change because he's so, like, he's so, like, content in, like, where he lives. So, great movie. Pretty sad at the end. But it's a great movie. So, yeah. Next one, we got Prisoners. Another movie that um, Jack Dylan Hall plays in. About these kids that get kidnapped. 
and they're on the hunt, but they're on the hunt for them. They on the hunt for them. They found this dude. They interrogate they interrogate him for like half a movie. I don't know, it's crazy. And just the the ending, like the the very last scene is crazy. Like I just it leaves you off of a cliffhanger. So it has like a you know what I'm saying? So yeah, the way it ends is crazy. The whole the whole way it's filmed too. It's kinda scary. It's a little bit scary. But yeah. I just saw, I saw my mom that movie a few so I think like a week ago or something like that. But yeah, great movie. Kids get kidnapped. And they try to find them, bro. But it's just the way it's filmed and all that. Great movie. Um Last one. We got American Gangster. One of my favorite actors of all time is um Ninja Washington. I just I, I love the messages I love the message he brings when he does like um what's those things called when he oh yeah, when he does speeches to like colleges and bro, he's just so smart. Ninja Washington is one of the ones and especially when it comes to acting too, he puts all his all into it. But American Gangster is um about him and he's like he's a gangster. And he's just like a bro, he don't care. Like he's like he's gonna do whatever he wants to do. And about yeah, about so it's it's kinda like good fellas a lit kinda like that a little bit. But just imagine there's a Washington in it. And it's about just crime. Crime movie, bro, and it's great, bro. I love it. I love Denzel Washington. Another movie with him in it is John Q. That's not on the list, but another good film with Denzel Washington in it. I didn't know if I wanted to put that or American Gangster, but I put American Gangster on there. So, yeah, twenty films. I think you should watch. Top to bottom, great movies. Great, great movies. Um, all these movies are. All all these movies are old because I I just I love like I love old movies because I was everything back in the nineties eighties seventies was just better. That's all I can say. Everything in the nineties eighties seventies is just better. So, but some of these are newer, like Prisoners, The Dark Knight. It's not really the Joker. Um, that's really it for mid mid nineties, but. Some of these are pretty old. But I love old movies, man. And I love film. And I am inspired to be a film director one day. Just take notes on how other films are made and how the storytelling is and all that. So, yeah. If you want me to make any other videos like this talking about albums, um, yeah, anything for real. Let me know. And, yeah. I'm going to see you in the next video. And this was just like experiment video just to do something new. So yeah. Hope y'all be safe. I'm gonna see y'all next video. It's time to edit. No cap. It's time to edit. I'll see y'all.